Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I just want to make sure everyone's in the right place. This is a forum on anti-counterfeiting. If you're here to learn how to counterfeit products, uh, you're in the wrong place. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jeremy Wilson. I serve as the director of our anti-counterfeiting and product protection program. I'm honored to participate in this forum today. I think it's exciting to see so many people coming together uh, that want to learn about uh, the issues and dangers and et cetera of product counterfeiting in Michigan. And I generally welcome any opportunity to advance discourse that uh, integrates uh, research policy and practice. So I'm happy to be uh, here with you today to, uh, uh, to accomplish that objective. Uh, I'd like to begin by setting uh, the stage a little bit for product counterfeiting and talk a little bit about uh, what it is and some ways that uh, we think about it and just uh, set some of that larger context. Uh, product counterfeiting is a form of intellectual property violation. Most of our work uh, focuses on uh, trademark infringement and this would be any case where a product or package would bear some trademark that's very similar to one that's uh, officially uh, registered to someone else. We often think of designer goods such as handbags and jewelries uh, when we think of product counterfeits, uh, but really uh, virtually any product can be counterfeited, uh, including auto parts, electronics, pharmaceuticals, food, beverages, uh, etc. And it's not just uh, brand name products that are counterfeited, uh, generic products are counterfeited as well. And so basically anything from Christmas lights and toothpaste to aviation parts and pesticides. It's important to uh, keep a, a distinction in mind when thinking about counterfeit products, and that's those that are deceptive and non-deceptive. Uh, deceptive counterfeits are those where uh, we as consumers purchase goods and think we're buying an authentic product. Uh, this deceptive, I'm sorry, non-deceptive uh, counterfeits are those when uh, we knowingly purchase these products and we, we know from the, the very beginning that they're uh, not in fact authentic. authentic. Um, and simply calling something a replica doesn't necessarily mean it's a legal product and that uh, intellectual property uh, is not being violated. You know, we often think of product counterfeiting as something that happens very far away in some distant land. But as many of you know, and we were discussing this morning, uh, just last Wednesday, there was a significant seizure at the Meridian Township Mall uh, where they seized uh, a number of alleged counterfeit uh, sports mem memorabilia and, and other items there. And so uh, this is an issue that happens uh, not just uh, globally, but also right here in our backyard. Uh, there's a number of things that make product counterfeiting attractive to potential offenders. Uh, most experts point to the fact that it can be very easy to get started in this illeg illegitimate business, that the profits can be enormous, the risk of apprehension can be very small, and when apprehended, uh, the penalties are often quite low. But it's important to address this issue for a number of different reasons. Uh, first of all, the magnitude appears to be quite large. You know, estimates put product counterfeit at product counterfeiting at about five to seven percent of world trade, or six hundred billion dollars annually around the globe. There are a lot of different estimates that are floating out there in terms of the size of the problem, but most experts agree that these estimates are generally unreliable due to various methodological <coughs> problems in them. But we do know. Uh, through existing data sources that the, the size of the illegitimate market is quite large and growing. Uh, another reason that it's important to address this issue is that its effects are multi-dimensional. Uh, we know that product counterfeits affect consumer health and safety. You know, every year, uh, hundreds of thousands of people die and are injured from counterfeit products. Industry loses revenue and incentives for innovation, brand value, and reputation. Governments lose tax revenue and must pay for enforcement. The economy suffers loss of jobs and economic growth uh, from foregone sales of legitimate merchandise. And society suffers uh, generally because of potential risk to the national security supply chain and other crimes that are involved uh, with product counterfeiting. The enforcement of product counterfeiting is also complicated by several factors. Again, the magnitude is large. And so in an era of shrinking resources, we're asking law enforcement to prioritize this problem with, with many others. But also the variation in the types of product counterfeiting make combating it very difficult. Some of these incidents could be, you know, a single person operating out of their bedroom at home. Other incidents could involve a network of offenders around the globe uh, 
that uh, transcend uh, culture and laws and regulations and technological sophistication, making uh, tracking down and uh, addressing the issue very difficult and obviously then coordinating numerous organizations uh, to, to learn about and respond to it. And then uh, finally, because research is sparse uh, in this area, there's not a lot of empirical guidance on the best way to approach it. And that's where we come in. Given uh, Michigan State University's mission and, and capabilities, uh, industry and agencies and others came to us to help to, to, to uh, uh, encourage us to serve as an intellectual leader in this area and help drive uh, the, the scientific development in the area. And so we grabbed onto that opportunity and have push, been pushing forward ever since. And so our program has been formed to serve as an independent and objective evidence-based voice in the process. Uh, we are comprehensive and interdisciplinary and in our translational research, education, and outreach um, all come together to try to help develop evidence-based uh, anti-counterfeit strategy. Uh, we work with um, agencies and legislators and policymakers, decision makers, industry, and others, and we bring folks together in a safe, productive environment where we can have a, a, a discussion about these problems and discuss the best ways to move forward. Um, I'd encourage you all to, uh, uh, to take a look at our website or to contact any of us, uh, where uh, we can share our work with you and uh, we can discuss ways that we might uh, serve as a resource for you all. In fact, uh, just recently, we, uh, with support from the U.S. Department of Justice and the Michigan State Police, we just completed a series of training and awareness videos about product counterfeiting that you may be interested in, in checking out and, and sharing with your colleagues that they talk all about the nature of, of this problem and, and what it means for us. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge the, uh, the Institute for Public Policy and Social Research that has supported uh, the research that we're going to talk about today. And I'd also like to thank them for pulling this forum together today so that we could uh, share all these uh, uh, findings with you. And so I'll, I'd now like to turn it over to uh, two of our team members, uh, Drs. John Spink and Justin Heinen, who will share with you some of the very interesting work that we've done here looking at product counterfeiting in Michigan. I do want to note that our work is just basically scratching the surface. We don't have all the answers, but through the work that we've done, we think uh, we've developed some substance to help us frame the policy discourse on this, on this uh, problem, and I look forward to uh, uh, having that discussion today. And then after them, uh, uh, Derek Burgess from uh, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security will talk a little bit more about some of the practical issues in investigating and responding to these cases. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Speaker.